Welcome to this video on rearranging algebraic equations. This is one of the most useful skills you'll ever need to know in algebra because it comes up so many times. You might get given an equation that looks something like this. Rearrange to make x the subject. And you might get given some kind of expression or equation like sixty equals 60. Now when the question says make x the subject, what that really means is we need to make x equal something. So in this case, we don't have x equals, we've still got an si, and a ty next to the x on the side of the equals sign. So what we need to do is get rid of the si, get rid of the ty, and all we'd be left with is x equals 60. In other words, to make something the subject, you need to get rid of everything else around that subject or around that letter, so that all that is left is that letter equals. Now the question of this tutorial is how do you get rid of everything? How do you remove these other si's and the ty's here? So let's get into how we do that now. The first key idea you need to know is opposites. This is how we remove everything. So if we look at the exact same question, the opposites mean we write the opposite term on the opposite side of the equals sign. So when we look at this x, it's connected to this s and this i by a multiplication sign. If you ever see two letters next to each other, they are connected with a multiplication sign. And when we think of what's the opposite of multiplied, the opposite of a multiplication is a divided by. So that means we can do the opposite of a times si, which is a divided by si on the other side of the equals sign. And this fraction here just means divided by. And once you've added this opposite SI on the right-hand side, you can get rid of the SI on the left-hand side. And we're just going to have a little sidebar about why this works. And the reason we can do the opposite on the right-hand side divided by SI is because we've actually will have done the same thing on both sides of the equation divided by SI over here as well, which leaves us with SI divided by SI. And that works because if you have anything divided by itself, like 6 divided by 6, or 1.1 divided by 1.1, or even a Rubik's Cube divided by a Rubik's Cube, it always equals 1. If you have SI divided by SI over here, that will equal 1, which means we really have 1 times this x, and 1 times an x is just an x, so we don't even need to write it out at all. Now the exact same thing holds true for this ty here. It's x times ty on the left-hand side, so we're going to put divided by ty, which is the opposite term on the opposite side of the equals sign. We're going to put it on the right-hand side out here. And again, that will work because technically we will have done it on both sides, divided by ty on this one. ty divided by ty, like anything divided by itself, equals 1, which we don't need to write out, so it cancels. And all we're left with is x equals 60 divided by sity. We can write that out a little bit more neatly as x equals 60 over sity. And that is how you remove things. You write the opposite of the thing you want to remove on the opposite side of the equals sign. Now there's a few more nuances. It's not always multiplication and divided by. We might get a term that looks something like this, and we need to rearrange to make k the subject. In addition to multiplication and divided by when we're talking opposites, we also have pluses and minuses which are opposite to each other. Or here we have a square root, and the opposite of a square root is a squared, or the opposite to any power is a root. So the opposite of a power of 3 wouldn't be a square root, it would be a cubed root with a little 3 written up here. So now how do we get rid of everything around this k? Let's look at this big divided by 2 to start with. Now the opposite of a divided by 2 must be a times 2. So we put a times 2 on the opposite side of the equals sign. And that means we can get rid of this divided by 2 over here. Cross it out. Next, working our way in towards the k, we have this big square root sign over here. And the opposite of a square root is a squared. So we can put a squared on the opposite side of the equal sign. Now if you're squaring something, you have to square everything. So if you're ever doing a squared, put brackets around everything on that side of the equation and put a squared. So it squares the whole right-hand side over here. And once you've done that opposite thing on the opposite side of the equal sign, you can get rid of this square root. Now we still have this minus 1 tacked onto the end as we work towards the k. The opposite of a minus 1 is a plus 1, because pluses and minuses are opposite. So we can put a plus 1 on the opposite side of the equal sign. And then we cross out the minus 1 over this left-hand side. And finally, we have a times 5 next to the k. It's the last thing remaining. So the opposite of a times 5 is a divided by 5. So we can draw a big line underneath this whole right-hand side and write divided by 5, because everything has been divided by 5. Now we can cross out the times 5 on this left-hand side, and all we're left with now is a k. So if I write this out a little bit more neatly, that would be k equals 60 times 2 squared plus 1, all divided by 5. Now you don't need to simplify it or solve it. All you need to do is rearrange it so that k is the subject. And that's what we've done. So let's look at a couple more rules because we can't just do this in any order. What if we didn't divide everything by 5, we just divided the 60 by 5? It would have given us a different answer. So we need a rule for that too. And to see how that rule applies, we're going to use another equation. This big long one to make p the subject. 
When you think about the order, you need to think bed mass. And if you can't remember, bed mass, the B stands for brackets, E stands for exponents, which means the powers and the roots. D stands for division or divided by, M for multiplication, A for addition, and S for subtraction. And when you're solving an equation, you start with the brackets and move your way through bed mass all the way down. Now, because we're removing things and doing opposites, we're also going to go the opposite way for bed mass. So we're going to start by looking if there are any whole terms subtracted from our p. So here we've got a big p, and this whole term out here, this minus 5xy squared, is separated by only a minus. So that's the first thing we're going to do. And we're going to do the opposite of a minus 5xy squared over here by adding a plus 5xy squared on the right-hand side, the opposite side of the equal sign. And then we can cross out this original minus 5xy squared. Now just write that a little bit more neatly below. Let's carry on working our way out. Multiplication and division come next. So here we have this whole term up the top all divided by this 3cat. So we can do the opposite of a divided by 3cat, which is times 3cat. But again, we can't just put a times 3cat. We have to times everything by 3cat. So if in doubt, put everything in brackets. And once we've done a times 3cat to everything on this right-hand side, we can get rid of this divided by 3cat on the left-hand side. So let's write that out a little more neatly. All that's left now on this left-hand side is p squared minus 1. Now for the first time, you'll notice this minus 1 here isn't connected to the p by anything except the minus. And so we go back to the bottom and deal with that one before we deal with the exponents or the power that's squared up here. Which means now we can do the opposite of a minus 1 on the opposite side of the equal sign, which is a plus 1. And then we can cross out the minus 1 over here. And if we write that one out more simply, all we're left with is p squared. Now the final thing we need to get rid of is the squared. And the opposite of a squared is a square root. So that means we can put a big square root over the whole opposite side of the equals sign. That means we can cross out the squared, and all we're left with is a big P equals. Now it doesn't matter how messy the opposite side of the equals sign gets, you just write it all in there and do it step by step. And this would be your answer. And there's just one more type of exception you need to know about. This exception is when the subject, what you're trying to find, is a denominator, which means it's on the bottom of a fraction. So if we look at this question here, we want to make b the subject. So the first thing we need to do is get rid of this divided by the subject here, or this divided by b, and go times b, the opposite, on the opposite side over here. And that means we can cross it out on the bottom of a fraction, and we don't have to deal with it anymore. Now we can follow our normal rules again. Here we have b multiplied by f, and the opposite of a times f is a divided by f. So we do divided by f on the opposite side of the equals sign, so that puts it down here. And if we write this out a little bit more cleanly, we just have b equals 3x divided by f. So here's everything you need to know from this video. When you're rearranging, the most important skill is you can remove everything around what you're trying to find by doing the opposites. You put the opposite of the term you want to get rid of on the opposite side of the equal sign. The second rule is when your subject is a denominator, that means the bottom of a fraction, you're going to need to multiply because you want to get it out of the bottom of a fraction and onto the top again. Third, when we're thinking about opposites, pluses and minuses are opposite to each other. Multiplication and division are opposite to each other. And powers are opposite to roots, or squares opposite to square roots. Finally, remember when you're solving things, look at whole terms and work backwards up bed mass, because we're thinking opposite in this whole video. So look for any whole terms that are subtracted and added, then do any that are divided or multiplied by, and finally, anything with brackets or powers at the end. So let's go through a couple more examples to finish. Here with this equation, we want to make r the subject. And sometimes I'll write something funny like in terms of v, pi, and h. All that means is you don't need numbers, you just leave the letters as they are. So here, if we want to get r by itself, this whole term on the right-hand side is divided by 3. So we want to do the opposite of a divided by 3, which means we put a times 3 on the opposite side of the equal sign. Then we can cross out our divided by 3. Next, we want to get rid of this times pi here. The opposite of a times pi is a divided by pi. So we can divide the whole left-hand side by pi. Then we can cross that one out on the right-hand side. Next, we still have a times h up there. So we still need to do divided by h, the opposite of a times h, on the opposite side of the equals sign. And finally, we've got the squared, this r squared left over. And the opposite of a squared is a square root. So we write a big square root around the whole opposite side of the equals sign. And all we're left with is r equals the square root of 3v over pi h. And we'll do one more question before we finish. Here we need to make g the subject. Now we have g down the bottom of a fraction, but we can't get rid of it because it's surrounded by this square root sign and by this times 2 pi. So we need to unwrap it first so we're just left with the fraction. So we get rid of the times 2 pi by doing the opposite of that, a divided by 2 pi on the opposite side. 
once the axiom, we can get rid of this big square root surrounding the L divided by G. So the opposite of a square root is a squared. So we squared everything on that left-hand side. Now all we're left with is the fraction L over G. And we want to find G, so we get that off the bottom of a fraction, which is this point number two. So we multiply both sides by G. So we put times G on this side, it'll cancel out the G on the right-hand side, and now we can start to properly rearrange and think, how do we get G by itself? And you'll notice that G is multiplied by this whole big squared area. So we can do the opposite of a times this whole squared thing and do L divided by this whole squared thing on the right-hand side. And all we're left with is G on the left-hand side, so we can just write that out a bit more neatly as G equals L divided by T over two pi squared. And this is everything you need to know for rearranging equations.